Hey guys, Hamsterbull here with a new video and welcome to my review of Tari Wow. More specifically, their international Mr. Pandaria server called Evermoon. So before I begin this review, how about a little backstory? You see, I've always been a bigger fan of the older versions of World of Warcraft, with Burning Crusade being my favorite followed closely by Classic. But I'd be lying if I said I was never intrigued and curious about the later expansions, which is one of the reasons why I'm now raiding on Hades WoW, a Cataclysm private server. So it goes without saying that one day I decided to give a Mist of Pandaria server a shot, but not on this particular server. The first server I decided to give a proper shot was the old Panasan server, which is now called Firestorm. But to be fair, Panashan was never really a good representation of Mr. Pandaria, as it was plagued by a ton of bugs, which ruined the immersion and experience for me. I made a review of that server a while back, and it probably comes to no one's surprise that I ripped on that server when I made the review. So, after Panashan, I got word of another Mr. Pandaria server, Wow Freaks. And on paper, things looked quite promising. The content there was working much better, though at some points it was still a little too custom for me, with the heirlooms you got right at the beginning and the rare mobs and chests that gave you blue items to compensate for the 15 times leveling rate they have there. Not only that, they decided to give you the option of boosting yourself to max level and give you a full set of item level 496 PvP gear, which killed the leveling in a lot of gear progression at level 90, so I lost interest in another Mesa Panaria server. Again, not because of the expansion itself, but because what private servers offered people at that time. And then I heard about Tari WoW opening up a new international realm. You see, Tari has had a Mr. Pandaria server before, but it was a Hungarian server, so there was no point for me to play there. But now I can finally get a good chance of what exactly Mr. Pandaria was like, because this server got some really good feedback by some people. They claim that this is probably the only true Blizz-like Mr. Pandaria server out there, which is quite a claim. So, is that the case? Well, let's find out in this review of Tari Wow's Evermoon server. So let's start off with a little summary. Tari Wow's Evermoon server is a Mist of Pandaria server, duh, with a 2 times experience rate that can go up to 3 times if you recruit a friend. They have a cash shop but only for cosmetic items and they have cross realm enabled. What does that mean? Well, it means that when you're queuing for a battleground, raid or dungeon, you have a chance of playing together with people from their Hungarian realm and they obviously did this to decrease the time you'll be spending in the queue. More on that later. Another cool feature they have is the mercenary mode in PvP, which actually allows you to temporarily change faction, so again, you'll spend less time in the queue. In terms of progression, they recently released Throne of Thunder as their highest available raid, which is nice considering you could still jump in and be part of that progression through the raids, rather than walking around in your capital city and being surrounded by people who already have a boatload of Siege of Orgrimmar gear. Alright, enough introduction, let's make a character and see what this realm is like to play on. And for this expansion I'm going with a shaman, more specifically an elemental shaman, as I just love the way they play on Mr. Pandaria, though I'll stick with enhancement for leveling for now, as elemental is just a pain in the ass to level in the early stages. So when I went through the starting zone, I got a good first impression of Evermoon, meaning all the quests worked, the dialogue was in order and so on. My only concern was that it would have been nice to see this place crowded with other new players, but unfortunately that was not the case, and you'd only bump into the occasional player here and there while leveling. I'll talk about this a bit more in the population segment of this review. Now because this is a Mr. Medaria server, you're not dependent on other people to complete quests, because most of the mobs you'll face are a complete face roll. I've had the same problem so to say on Cataclysm. I mean, it's nice that you're overpowered and you can just steamroll through the content, but it doesn't offer you any challenge, so leveling can be a bit mundane, especially since the server doesn't have a high XP rate. Despite the mobs offering you barely any challenge, I do kind of like the leveling pace here. The 2 times rate makes sure you don't skip a ton of content, which allows you to really experience each zone and do a boatload of quests, but also give you enough XP that you can gain levels at a decent rate. The 2 times experience rate was also a good foreshadowing, as my experience on private servers has learned that servers with a high XP rate tend to have a lot of bugged quests, 
while low XP rate servers really need to have a big chunk of their content working just so you can keep on questing and not being forced to just grind mobs to level up. So during each zone, I was just amazed at how well everything was working. From simple gather and kill quests, to more complex quests that require escorting someone, cutscenes, dialogue and whatnot. Due to the lower experience rate, I did an absolute ton of quests before I even got to max level, and I don't think I encountered a single bugged quest while leveling all the way to level 90. Let me say that again, zero bugged quests after days of playtime put into a private server. And looking back, I actually had a lot of fun with the questing content, especially when I hit Pandaria. Like I said, I had played on two Mr. Pandaria private servers before, and after leveling here, it made me realize just how broken the content is over on the other Mr. Pandaria private servers, and how wonderful things are working here. So, to put it short, the leveling was amazing. My only gripe is that during leveling, I didn't manage to do a whole lot of dungeons due to just barely anyone queuing for said dungeons, but when it comes to the scripting, Tari's Evermoon server is starting to look really good. Alright, let's talk about some dungeons, because a big part of the gear grind in Mr. Medaria is doing dungeons, not just for gear, but also for bonus reputation for whatever faction you want, and the ever so sought after justice and valor points. So how are they on the server? Well, to put it simple, they are magnificent. I've done a boatload of dungeons so far, and I haven't been able to really spot any major bugs. All bosses seem in order, and even things like pathfinding and dialogue seems to work great here too. I've had a lot of fun in dungeons such as Scarlet Monastery, the Storm Style Brewery, the revamped version of Skullamance, and many more. I'm honestly stunned that the quality of these dungeons is so high and it's a perfect build up to the eventual raid content. So let's talk about the raids here. Now, at first I was a little worried about this, because while the dungeon finder popped rather quickly, raid finder obviously needs 5 times as many people to be in the queue. When I tried it for the first time, I unfortunately found barely anyone in the queue, which was not a great start. So after that little debacle, I started asking around if things like LFR even happen here on the server. Turns out it does, but only really on the day the raids reset or one day after. If you want to queue up a couple of days later, the chances of finding a raid group are pretty slim, so if you want to raid and gear up, you're pretty much stuck to those two days and maybe find a raid in the weekends if you're lucky. Luckily though, I decided to log in and queue up shortly after the raid reset, and what do you know, I got into a raid. So the first raid we're doing is the Terrace of Endless Spring, and this is the very first time I stepped foot into this raid as on Firestorm, I only did Heart of Fear and Throne of Thunder, if I recall correctly. So this being Raid Finder, the fights themselves were, well, incredibly easy. Even with me messing up and people not standing where they should be, we breezed through the bosses like they were nothing. So how was this raid? Well, to put it shortly, amazing. I compared it to Retail WoW, and once again the fights are almost identical in terms of how they work, so it seems like everything here was in order. That and I managed to get a small upgrade from this raid, which was a nice little bonus. But of course, Raid Finder is pretty much tourist mode. There's no challenge here, and it's a complete face roll. If I wanted to do some proper raiding here and see the content, I had to at least step into some normal dungeons. And I was in luck, because the guild I was in called Fresh is raiding regularly, meaning about, let's say, three to four times a week, so I decided to sign myself up for a few. The first normal raid I did was the Mogushan Vaults. I have to say that I really, really enjoyed this raid as fights like Elegon have a lot of mechanics that are both fun and challenging. So how was this raid? Well the only bug I could find was one where at the fight with the Spirit Kings the boss runs down and up again for some odd reason. But other than that, it was pretty much flawless. It's quite amazing actually, the more content I do, the more I search to find something that's broken. The more content I find that is just working great, apart from maybe a few minor bugs. Now let's check out one more raid, Heart of Fear. Oh yeah, cause my shaman eventually got to item level 475, so I'm slowly but surely getting into the more high end of raids so to say. So the first boss, Imperial Vizier Zorlock, worked like a charm, except for just one thing. 
You see, during this boss fight, he will spawn these glowing circles on the ground, which you need to avoid. But, for some reason, everyone will take damage even if they are miles away from any circles. On top of that, the circles should spawn at the boss and slowly move away from him, but as you can see, they just appear at random. It is a bit annoying, but you are able to heal through it, so it's not a wipe, which means this boss is still very doable. Next up was Blade Lord Taliak. I was glad to see that this boss was working great. No noticeable bugs here. Unseen Strike worked just like the tornado mechanic, where you have to run around the boss while avoiding these tornadoes. Our raid leader called it Opposite Guitar Hero, and when you look at it from this perspective, yeah, I can kind of see why. Then we did Garalon, a giant bug where you have to focus down the legs, and all was good here as well. Same for Winged Lord Meliorak, which was a bit of a struggle for me, because the last time I did this was on Firestorm, and it doesn't work nearly as well as on Tari, so there were a lot of things that were new to me. Despite my mediocre performance, we still managed to kill it, so it was on to the last boss we tried, which was Amber Shaker Unsock. Unsock? Unsock? I don't know. Now this was one boss I never did before, so getting this fight down was a bit of a challenge for me with the transformation and watching explosions, the adds, the willpower and a boatload of other mechanics. However, we managed to kill this boss as well, and once again it was another boss fight that worked like a charm. After this raid we did a few more world bosses, and it was really nice to see just how many people showed up. I mean, the bosses themselves are a bit of a face roll, but it just looks epic when so many people are all working together to slay some enormous creatures in this game. And after all this was done, I looked back at the goodies I got and realized that I was now sitting at a very respectable item level of 486. So, looking back at the several raids I've done, how was it? Well, in one word, amazing. The only bugs I found was one of the bosses running back and forth in the Mogishan vaults and attenuation not working correctly on Imperial Vizier Zorlok. Everything else worked great, and Tari can be really proud of how well they have the rating content working here. Ah yes, PvP. As many of you know, I'm not that huge on PvP, but I can call this a thorough review if I don't talk about PvP for at least a little bit. So, does PvP happen here? Well, yeah. Battlegrounds and 2v2s happen quite often, which is nice, though 3 vs 3s and 5 vs 5 arena fights are a rare occasion, so keep that in mind. Now, because the classes and abilities are scripted well, it also means PvP is a smooth experience, and there's plenty of fun to be had. If you're good at it, at least. Tari does have something rather special. You see, they have an item level scaling system in place. They did this to kind of level the playing field, so to say, and I have to say it works quite well. So in a nutshell, PvP does happen quite frequently, so you can get your PvP fix here as well. So let's talk about the population here. I'm gonna go ahead and say it out loud. Tari, as of right now, has a bit of a population problem. The Evermoon server that I am on gets around 200 to 400 people online on average, which of course isn't that great. I have to say that this has definitely gone up over the last couple of weeks, as when I started playing it, it hovered around 150 people on average. So despite the low population, I'm still able to find raids for Raid Finder and regularly get dungeons to pop even as a DPS. So how is that possible? Well, like I said, the Evermoon server shares its population with the Hungarian server for things like raids, dungeons and battlegrounds. So, while on the server itself there might only be a few hundred people playing, in total there's about a thousand to fifteen hundred potential players that could be queuing up for something, and of course that results in pretty fast queue times which is always nice. Though, admittedly, it does mean that the majority of the people in your group will probably not speak English, which can lead to some communication problems. So, while it might not look that great on paper, the end result is a server that might feel a little empty, but where the queue times are rather short, apart from maybe Raid Finder where you really have to queue up after the weekly reset if you want to have a good chance of getting into one. It also has to be said that there are several raiding guilds here in Evermoon, and these raiding guilds are really dying to get more people on, as they are mostly doing 10-man content instead of 25-man, simply because they don't get a whole lot of people. This means that if you plan to roll here, you'll be welcomed with open arms into a PvE guild if you have the right mentality and you're willing to pull your own weight. 
One more thing I'd like to say about the population is that because of the small player base, it does mean the community is quite nice and tight knit. Yeah, I talked about this in my Primal WoW review as well, and it really seems to be a common thing on servers with a small population. People know each other, so there's less anonymity, which means there's less room to be an asshole in a raid and just blend back into a sea of thousands of players. All in all, the community here is actually quite nice. The people I find in dungeons, even if they are from the Hungarian server, are quite decent, and like I said, the rainy guilds in every moon are welcome you with open arms, which is always a good thing for new players looking to make this their home. Alright then, after a thorough look at Tari's Evermoon server, I've come to a conclusion. So, is this a good server? Yes, definitely. The people are nice and there's enough PvE and PvP going on to keep you occupied in the server. So, do I recommend the server? Well, I think the answer is obvious. Of course I would recommend it. This is an absolute gem of a server and anyone who is even slightly interested in trying out Mr. Pandaria should definitely give Tari's Evermoon server a go. I mean, take me for instance, I was never that huge into Mr. Pandaria. Hell, in the beginning I said that Mr. Pandaria isn't even my top 3 of favorite WoW versions, and I'm still surprised by just how much fun I had here. From the quests, the community, the raids, the shaman class itself, it was an amazing experience, and I'll definitely try to stick around here, gear up my shaman a bit more, and who knows, make more videos about the server. For now though, I would just like to leave you with this. Tari's Evermoon server is by far the best scripted Mr. Pandaria server out there and I encourage everyone to give it a try. And that's all for now. I hope you liked this review and maybe I'll see you on the server or I'll see you in the next video. As always, I'm Hamsterwheel and have a good one.